I opened my eyes a little. Everything was still blurry, but I could hear nearby voices. Being smart, I decided to keep my head down and eyes closed to seem unconscious still. Who is she? Jack's voice. Hell if I know. She helped me when Zago was around. She took him down pretty quick, all along with some other person. Jeff's voice. They were moving around me. One of them grabbed my hair and pulled my head back, but thankfully I was smart enough not to immediately open my eyes after waking up. Jeffy, don't do that, you meanie. Sally? I could care less what happens to this creepy pasta wannabe. He pushed my head forward uh, so hard. I fell over. Wanna be fucking. Oh, if I wasn't tied up, buddy. Come on, man. She's still passed out. You could. You can't just do that to her. Jack said and lifted my chair up, sitting me back in the corner. Just as I thought, I got balanced. Someone. Just as I got balanced, someone yelled from downstairs, saying dinner was ready. See ya. Jack uh, said uh, possibly to me as he walked out. Don't go to sleep just yet, Jeff said, walking out. Here, Miss Miss Gigi will keep you company, Sally said, sitting something on my lap, possibly a stuffed toy, then uh, ran out, closing the door behind me, behind her. I opened my eyes once they were out of the room and looked around. My white hair hung in my face. They must have put me in, a, in my human form to get me through the barrier. Then made me change back to my shadow pasta form. Upon looking around, I figured out that I was in the old rundown mansion that the creepypastas lived in. I was here once before to help Ben get out of his sickness that Zago had gave him. Zago knows nothing of us or me. I struggled with the ropes for a moment before seeing a sharp splintered piece of wood in the corner. I got up and walked over to the splintered piece of wood and cut the rope. I untied my waist and ankles while sitting so I wouldn't make too much noise. After getting myself untied, after getting myself untied, I made my way towards the door. Only then did I realize they stripped me of my weapons. I gritted my teeth and searched the drawers. Then I saw the bunny Sally set on my lap. I picked it up and laid it in the chair. When I did notice uh, what I did, uh, when I did, I noticed a loose board. And when I pulled the new the loose uh, board away there was my things along with other people's things. I grabbed my weapons hiding them where they were supposed to be. Finally making my way finally making my way towards the door I grabbed the handle and pulled it open open carefully still but still it squeaked. That alerted Jeff and the rest. I heard them heading up the stairs and ran towards a, a window. A door at the end of the of the hall opened. Tiki Toby and Bloody Painter stepped out. I cursed under my breath and skidded to a stop. Jeff, EJ, and Ben were at the other end of the hall. I was in the middle of them, just great. I gritted my teeth as they moved closer Ben and AJ were smirking, and so was Jeff. I could feel it. Toby and Helen just... Toby and Helen just stood there, making sure I didn't run their way. 
I closed my eyes uh, as they moved closer. As soon as they were close enough, my eyes snapped open. My hair turned snow white, and my eyes, eyes became blood red. I jumped up and kicked I jumped up uh, I jumped up and kicked off uh, Ben's head. Uh, I uh, that sounds weird. Um I don't think she means that she kicked off Ben's head like she literally kicked it off his shoulders. I think she just means that she kicked off of his head to get a jump start and knocked him down. I began to run and uh, one of AJ's scalpels hit me in a nerve right in my back and I tumbled down the stairs. The scalpel fell out, but that didn't help any. It hurts like hell. I pushed myself up as a Jeff's knife. As Jeff's knife, knife came at me, and quickly stood up, ki stood up, kicking, stood up, kicking it away. I jumped back and Ben appeared uh, out of uh, a computer behind me. I spun around, uh, only to be kicked uh, into the stairs, breaking three ribs and two of the stairs. I heard. Uh, Jeff, EJ, Helen, and Toby jumped down in front of me. I opened my eyes, my vision now blurry, and glared at them. I forced myself up and punched EJ, spun around, and kicked Jeff in the gut while Helen tried to punch, tried punching me in the neck. I dropped down to one knee and spun in place, tripping him. I shot backwards when Toby pushed me back and raised his hatchet. I need his crotch. I'm not one to be messed with. I never I never have been and never will be. My hair began to flow gently in the air as I began to cast a spell, even though I knew it wouldn't work. Slenderman's tentacles grabbed me and wrapped themselves tightly around me from my shoulders down. I was restrained. I screamed slightly from how tight his grip was on me and squeezed my eyes shut. Jeff la laughed as he stood up. You are a tough one, uh, I have to say that. I opened my eyes slightly and glared at Jeff. As my words were quickly cut off, uh, cut short when Slenderman squeezed tighter, causing me to scream. Sally looked uh, at me with tears in her eyes. Don't hurt her! She pleaded, and Slenderman looked at her. EJ looked at Sally as well. Go to your room, Sally. No, let her go, then I will, She wa Sally whined. Slenderman sighed and dropped me as the girl requested. Sally ran to me and helped me up, sitting me on the couch. Are you okay? I'm sorry about my friends. They're just stupid boys. They didn't know any better. I laughed slightly as the other, as the others said Sally's name in a less, less than pleased tone. The next day, after resting and getting accounted with the others, even though I already knew them, they began being nicer to me. Then they even apologized for hurting me. Although I had to leave uh, right after that due to complications.